Hi, I'm Hamish Black and welcome to Writing on Games. Writing young characters in any medium is tough. You see so many criticisms of said characters feeling like they were written by a 40 year old. An over-reliance on slang, a know-it-all attitude, or wistfully reflecting on the life experiences they seem too young to fully grasp makes it feel like we're listening to the writers pine for their own youth through these characters. An attempt to make someone seem wise beyond their years suddenly turns into clearly written by someone beyond their years. By comparison, I've been playing God of War and one thing that has been consistently surprising me is the depiction of Kratos' son Atreus. Contrary to how many people imagine child sidekicks, he's smart without being bratty, he's funny without becoming grating, and he can cut to the perhaps uncomfortable truth about events or characters minus any kind of malice. This is because the team behind God of War clearly weren't so focused on reliving their own youth so to speak, instead drawing on their wealth of parenting experience to break down how a young child would act in any given situation to believably justify everything Atreus says and does. It's this attention to detail in his characterization that makes Atreus more than just a likeable kid. The layers of depth his character adds to the story elevate it above one-dimensional self-seriousness in favour of something more restrained, nuanced and at times borderline naturalistic. There's a scene I really like in this regard, during the part where our protagonists find themselves helping the Witch of the Woods. When asked why she lives alone, she coyly responds with, it's better this way. You could imagine that had the kid not been there, your character could read between the lines. Kratos would stare silently, knowingly, grumpily into the middle distance. Two characters with mysterious pasts conveyed with a great deal of gravitas. Yeah, my father doesn't like people either, immediately cuts through any tension that might otherwise have been building up. Before Kratos can tell him off, Atreus hits back with the reality of the situation. What? He doesn't. Neither adult knows how to respond, he may have contravened some unspoken social norm that hey, some things are best left unsaid, but Atreus hasn't lied at any point. In a few short seconds, the tone of the scene has dramatically changed and it's all the better for it. It reminded me of countless times where my young nephew would absolutely derail a serious conversation between adults with just a few words, as if to ask, why are you tiptoeing around this? It completely changes the energy in the room, in those moments all you can do is laugh, because it's hard to argue that the kid isn't, you know, right. Hell, there's something utopian to the idea that we could just say what we mean to each other. We see it as an impressively straight ahead, unfiltered way to view the world. You know, that kid's sharp. The writers of God of War are clearly willing to give Atreus the same credit. Like all kids that age, he's curious. He's not trying to cause trouble, to manipulate people or pit them against each other to get what he wants. Quite the opposite, he's idealistic, empathetic, simply trying to make sense of the world around him. And this is something made all the more difficult by the fact he's balancing this curiosity with his awe of Kratos' abilities, usually expressed with a wonderfully understated, whoa, his confusion as to why his dad is suddenly so present, his grief over the loss of his mother, as well as a desire to impress Kratos despite all of this, to live up to the one role model he has. All these conflicting emotions make it hard for Atreus to paint a complete picture of events, but instead of ruthlessly trying to hammer that picture out of Kratos, the writers lean on his timid nature and general understanding of his father's temperament, letting Kratos' actions speak for themselves and have Atreus figure it out gradually. Importantly, the writing team here understands that the desire to learn, to be taught, is a far more believable trait in a child than simply having them be a whiz kid know-it-all. He's book smart for sure, but we're frequently reminded that everything he has learned has a traceable source, usually his mother. It's an emotional intelligence that acts in stark contrast to Kratos' evident and often willful ignorance, something brought into focus thanks to the pair being, well, really goddamn close to each other for a long goddamn time. We witness many tense encounters between the two, given an uncomfortable intimacy thanks to the fact that Cameron never cuts away, where Kratos will become frustrated at his son's supposed innocence, chastising him for his clumsiness and lack of foresight, but will disregard the very valid observations that Kratos isn't any better, that perhaps he's the reason they're in these messes to begin with. 
As a result, even Atreus's moments of dissent, where he'll directly confront the character we're controlling, don't come across as bratty in any way. They're well earned. He's merely using his unfiltered view of the things we have seen him experience to point out what should be obvious to Kratos. To put it another way, by having Atreus act as believably as he does, the writers level the playing field of the father-son relationship. Atreus clearly needs his dad for physical protection, but outside of combat, Kratos' immaturity and unpreparedness for his journey are arguably far more pressing than the issues holding back his young son. And you know, perhaps this is a cynical way of reading things, but I never feel that Atreus even approaches the realm of irritating, because by establishing his character so fully, the writers have an excuse to make sure that any questions he has about his dad or the world they inhabit are kept short and snappy. Because of this, dialogue in God of War feels surprisingly naturalistic. Rarely do our protagonists speak unless they have real reason to. Questions are raised that Kratos might not have the answer for leading us to try and fill in the blanks along with his son, deepening our connection to this fantastical world, allowing the dialogue to avoid a lot of lengthy, unnatural exposition. In short, everything about Atreus' character feels earned and well justified, meaning that he inevitably avoids a good deal of the pitfalls many writers seem to face when constructing younger characters, as well as shaping how the larger story is told. It's not just that he's likeable despite the odds, the story of Kratos' growth is markedly more convincing because of how believably Atreus reacts to the world around him, and it's all a result of the writing team taking the time to make sure that the kid acts like a goddamn kid would. So I hope you enjoyed my piece on God of War, if you did, maybe consider doing all the usual things. As always, these videos are made possible by your unbelievably generous pledges on Patreon, so if you feel like supporting the show directly, maybe check it out. Special thanks go to Mark B. Writing, Nico Blakely, Michael Wolf, Artyom Vitsyuk, Spike Jones, The Nameless Guy, Edward Clayton Andrews, Vasily Hrabinka, Chris Wright, Dr. Motorcycle, Harry Fuertes, Ham Migas, Travis Bennett, Zach Casserly, Samuel Pickens, Tom Nash, Shardfire, Philip Lange, Rob, Rusty Shackelford, Anna Pimentel, Jesse Ryan, Brandon Robinson, Justin's Holderness, Biggie Smith, Peter, Christian Kuneman, Camel Traffic, Nicholas Ross, and Charlie Yang. And with that, I'm Hamish Black, and this has been Writing on Games. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.